Let's talk 40 years from now or 50 mm -hmm. years from now. What, what, what could that look like? You're talking about brain implants, you're talking about me digitally printing some kids, or you selling me some mm -hmm. kids. But like, what, what's something that we should just accept now that could be a reality? I think once we have a technological singularity, meaning AIs are much smarter than people. Okay, can we define that singularity? What um, is that? Singularity is defined as a point when the rate of technology advance is so fast that from a human point of view, it appears infinite. Like, say that the AIs in the global brain network are making new Nobel Prize level discoveries every five seconds, right? And what's going to come along with that is, you know, molecular nanotechnology where you can just build anything out of molecules the way we would now out of Legos or, or in a machine shop and the ability to cure human disease and, and, and prevent death by just sending little bio nano probes in, in, into the body to fix things and 3D printing that, that solves material scarcity on the level of everyday human needs. So I mean, I mean having all these technologies coordinated together is going to be a fundamentally different regime of life than we have now. That's and mind boggling. I mean, to me, to think that's about... That's just the beginning. And that happens every five seconds. The thing is, this is the focus on the external machinery. But if you think about your state of consciousness, imagine that you had, you know, access to reprogram anything in your mind whenever you wanted to. So you're like, well, I, you know, I, I wish I didn't feel like eating so much junk. Okay, let's load the patch. Don't want to eat junk. Ding, you're done, right? Well, you know, I wish I wasn't attracted to this type of girl. Okay, ding, I'm attracted to that, that kind instead. Like, I'd like to be able to you know, focus fully for the next five months on this. Okay, let's load the focus patch. You can do that, right? So the ability to rewire your brain at will, I mean, mental illness of the kinds we're familiar with now are gone. Unhealthy relationships are gone unless they're specifically what turns you on, right? I mean, so... That's it, assuming the machines let us survive. Then yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Then we have these options. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what I think is going to happen is we'll each have two options. So option A, you fuse your brain into the super intelligent mind matrix. Then you become part of something billions, trillions, quadrillion times more intelligent than you were. On, on the other hand, probably you lose your illusions of individual self and, and, and free will and your nostalgic attachment to your human memories. And, and your I mean, body, you lose your body as well. You lose the requirement to have your body. You right. could have your body, but if you can see through a billion bodies at one time, this one body becomes arbitrary, right? I mean, I, I, I think that that's one interesting option, and there's a question of how fast you want to fuse with this supermind. If it happens in one second, or do you want to phase it gradually over a year or something, right? All so right. that Hopefully that's your choice. Who knows? And that, then why have new but, humans if we've already got all well, these? Well, that's one option. So okay. now option B is remain in a form very similar to the human form we have now, get rid of death and disease, get rid of mental illness, you know, no need for scarcity because instead of just a dishwasher in your house, you have a 3D printer that will print you any physical object you want, be it food or a new uh, bicycle, whatever it is, and you live in a human life of joy and abundance. Yeah, I don't know if the joy is there, but we'll have the abundance. Well, the joy, everybody will, will get the, more The depressed. joy will be there because if you don't feel joyful enough, you will just load joy <laughs> patch number 3.7 into oh, your on, brain. Ben. Even you know you that sounds feel, a little ridiculous. You will feel, that's, that's not ridiculous Isn't that at synthetic all. joy? Isn't the human experience all about Overcome, overcoming difficulties and dealing with a You know, my, my second son, uh, Zebulon, had a quote which was, pain builds character, bad character. So, so I mean, I, I would say humanity has a lot more scope than what we normally understand. I mean, the, the states of... The caveman mentality, you think, were... Well, it's just particular, right? I mean, the states of consciousness we enter into, they're different than the ones that people in Stone Age societies had. Very, very different. And they're different than the ones a monk meditating in a Buddhist temple has. And, you know, they're very different than the mentality people will have in the future era of, you know, 
human abundance, I'm envisioning. I think the brain is capable of Involving. a lot of states of consciousness beyond what we enter into on, on an everyday basis. Like if, okay. if you could experience what the average guy in the UK in 1350 was experiencing day to day, it's going to be very, very different than the way... Okay, but way, without the, the social the media, he's now, still got to right? eat, he's got kids, the sun comes out, it won't be that different, will it? Um, well, it depends on, on how you're looking at it. When, when you're looking at it like... Joy comes from struggling and overcoming struggles. I mean, they may not think that way at, at that point. I, I don't think that's a necessary part of human yeah. physiology. Because like I, I, I talk to people who say, well, death is what gives life meaning. You don't and, believe that. I mean, I, you can derive meaning from anything. Human mind is wonderfully flexible. But I think if we don't have to die, suddenly we'll find other ways to derive meaning that... That don't, that don't involve dying, right? There, 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 there's, a, there's a lot of ways to, to derive, derive meaning, right? A, 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 other, other than through death or through suffering and then feeling, feeling the suffering go away. You know, it, you know it, it might be that there's some certain minimum level of pain and discomfort that's just intrinsic to the human experience. My feeling is we habitually experience much more than that minimum level right now. Because where do you stop? Like you, go, you go to the Middle Ages, I mean, it's not that like half your kids would die as babies, right? I mean, very high percentage of women dying in childbirth b b back then, right? And mostly your teeth would rot by age 40. You'd have a toothache in your mouth all the time because there was no dentistry, right? And so you could look at the way people live in the Middle Ages and say, well, Suffering is intrinsic to life. It, it's just natural that half your kids die as babies, half the time your wife dies of childbirth, and you have a toothache all the time because all your teeth are rotten. But now we look at it and we're like, no, that's totally unnecessary, right? So I think a lot of the thing, suffering that we take for granted is part of life now okay. will seem totally unnecessary. The, the thing is, humans in that era, they'll be human because they choose to be human because otherwise they could fuse with the superhuman AI mind matrix. They choose to be human for their own aesthetic reasons, essentially, and, and why not? I mean, I don't think every dog or bird should become a human, just because we're, in a way, more generally intelligent than they are, right? I mean, every creature in the ecosystem has some beauty and integrity to it. Hum humans do also, right? It, it, it's not like we're morally bound to uplift ourselves to become superhuman AIs and, okay. and, and, and give up our, our humanity. The thing is, the humans will be like the squirrels in the National Park are now, right? They're, they're carrying out, the squirrels in the National Park are carrying out their lives, and we who take care of the National Park don't intervene in their love affairs or their hunt for acorns either. On the other hand, there is a world outside that park which they can't understand, and if they run out of it, they may get run over by a truck.